text expansion tools, cheap versus expensive. Is this one really worth over a thousand dollars? This PEX expansion tool costs about, it's under a hundred bucks if you can still find it. This one is over a thousand. They both claim to do the exact same job. So is the expensive one a ripoff or is the cheap one a flood just waiting to happen? Today, we're putting them through hell just to try to find out. For the professional plumber, this video will help you decide if this is a necessary investment for your business. For the serious DIYer, this could be the difference between a successful project and a call to a professional like me. And for the homeowner, this is a look inside the toolbox to see why quality tools matter. So let's start testing. So here we have the manual one, a long handled expander, a popular choice for budget DIY projects. And over here, the cordless M12 Fuel Pro Pex Expander, a favorite of professional plumbers. So first up, we're gonna do a simple speed test. Two connections, side by side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get my pieces cut. And I'm trying to cut them about the same length, that way we know they're, they're at least very similar. And we're going about eight inches. I love these cutters. All right, so I've got two pieces, just about the same length as you see. No, no tricks, no, no, no magic up my sleeve. Now, before we get started, we're gonna make sure both pieces are lubricated like they're supposed to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and get some gloves out. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and take the expansion head off. And as you see, I've never used this tool. And I'm gonna take a little bit of lube and put it right there on my rag. Now it doesn't take much, but you need to clean the inside of these heads, re-oil everything about once a week. Make sure you get it clean, make sure you get it dry. And this is all you're doing. You're just lubricating that head. And then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you got a rag where you can kind of roll it up like that and stick it down inside the expander head. So first you do the expander cone, then you do the expander head, and this lubricates it. That way it does what it's supposed to do. And guys, this will make your tool last longer. Now I'm gonna go to another area because we're gonna do it over here too. We've got the half inch head here because we're doing, of course, half inch expansion pecs. Again, it just takes a little bit. Wipe down the comb first. And no matter which tool you use, you wanna make sure you keep them lubricated like this all the time. Now, if I were to change from half inch head to a three quarter head, I'd want to lube the inside of it. I'd probably go ahead and wipe down the outside of it again, just in case, because if I've already got the lubricant out anyway, why not make sure it's ready to go? All right, put everything back up where it goes. All right, so as you know, in order to do an expansion joint, you put your piece on first, you put the cap, or God, what do they call this? 
put the expander ring on here. Yeah, Randy, it's gonna be fun to fit. This is gonna be fun. All right, so what I'm gonna have to do is kind of get it. That's what I was fixing to say. Let me let me see. Now, I'm not tightening this down really tight, y'all. All right, so I'm putting this in a vise just to hold it. Now, I don't have it super tight, but I've got to be able to use two hands on this tool. So what I wish, I wish that this was the rigid piece and then this was the handle. The reason being, it would let me keep pushing this way. So this is going to be kind of awkward, but let's do it and see what we can get it to do. What I'll do first is make sure I've got my pieces here to stick in it. So. I'm gonna push it in here. Holy shit. Now it automatically rotates. Man, it expanded it out pretty well. And now I'm just waiting for it to draw itself back in. Okay, so there's the first one. And again, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here, just making sure. Really, just using it to hold it. Okay, there's five. And that worked pretty good. Like I said, I put this in the vise to hold on to it. That way, I wouldn't have any problems. So, I've got my plug in, I've got my female adapter in, so we're gonna set this one over here. All right, so now, we're gonna use the Milwaukee tool. Again, I'm gonna pull out my pieces. All right, so let's see what it does. That'll keep your battery from running down. That one went in. Now, it still feels a little bit loose, so I'm gonna hold on to that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other end because it's really a one-handed system. Oh. I've done that before, so be careful. I'm gonna try and do this one just five times like I did the other one. All right, so the brass end has already come back down. The plug end's already snugging up on it too. So man, we're looking really good here. Both pieces are done. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put adapters, oh, sorry, there's pieces. We're gonna screw some bushings and adapters in here. So that we can put them, oh, you thought we were just gonna show you how they went together. No, we're gonna try to blow them apart and see which one holds better. That's what makes these videos fun. Now 
Alright. Alright, so we've got them both together. So now what we're gonna do with movie magic, I'm gonna make all this disappear. I've got this one marked. Go ahead and mark this one. Milwaukee, the, the home of motorcycles. Anyway, let's get the blast chamber up here where you can see it and let's have some fun. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the water turned on here into the pump. All right, and then I'm gonna crack it. Oh, that's there. Uh, then I'm gonna bleed out my water down here and you can see we're at 70, about 73 PSI. All right, so we got as much of the air blood as we can. Now, I'm gonna be really careful here because the last time we tried pumping this thing up a lot, we, we blew a well. So let's slowly pump this thing up. I'm gonna try and go slow. So we're gonna pump it up and see what kind of pressure we can get. And this is the manual one right here. Remember that. So add a little air to it. All right, now. Can you tell? All right, turning back on the water again. Now this time we got the Milwaukee. All right, bleeding all the air out. And nothing's leaking. All right. Cracking on the air slowly. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you, that's pretty good because the joints didn't blow, the pipe did. Very interesting. So the two connections side by side, the speed test. Well, the cordless tool, that was done in probably under 30 seconds. The manual tool, well, it got the job done, but it was probably three to four times slower. Now, on a whole house repot, that can be hours of lost time. And you're gonna have to have a tripod or something there to hold the pipe. But speed is only part of the story. Let's talk about power. Now, this is for half inch pecs. With the manual tool, this is a serious workout. It takes a lot of upper body strength. Now, it didn't take a lot. I was able to get it done, but the long handles, they can be awkward. After 10 of these joints, now imagine if you're doing three quarter or one inch, your arms are gonna be burning. With the cordless tool, it's just a pull of a trigger. It feels exactly the same doing one inch as it does half inch. For a pro working all day, this isn't about just convenience. It's about avoiding injury and fatigue. If you're a company owner and you're going manual, your guys ought to be pissed at you. Think about this. If you're doing half inch, maybe even one inch, and you're in a tight space, say you're up between some joists and you're trying to put a coupling on or put a T on to go somewhere else, and you're up in here trying to leverage this thing, you're holding it like this and trying to get all this in, I gotta look, I'm not saying it can't be done. But if you're doing a whole house repot, Sometimes you're gonna get into places that these handles can't handle. Now, this compact area on the M18, amazing, it works. And when you're up in those joists, if these can handles can't open wide enough, is it really gonna do what you need to do? So at that point, you physically cannot make the connection or you've gotta make it outside the joist, then put it in. Now, this would be an exact situation that you could run into. Maybe where a DIY project comes to a complete halt. Now the cordless tool, one hand, no problem. You just hold the pipe and get it in there and there it is. This is the deal breaker. This is why professionals invest in tools like this. But the most important difference is the one that you can't see. And that would be the pressure test, which we just did. Okay, the good thing about both these, they rotate. Now some of these don't and you literally, you get in there and you've got to keep turning. That way you're not just stretching out the same little piece all the time. The Milwaukee, it automatically rotates with each expansion too. This ensures the pipe is stretched perfectly, evenly, creating a flawless seal. And with the manual tool, some, remember, you'll have to rotate. This one, you don't have to. But like I said, guys, we can't even find this online anymore. 
Now, if you forget or you don't do it evenly, you can create tiny channels that will cause a slow leak behind the wall of the pipe. The power tool, it doesn't just make the job faster, it makes it more reliable. So is the cheap tool worth it? For a DIYer with a couple of fittings to do in a wide open space, probably so. But it's physically demanding, it's slow, and it has a higher risk of use error. For any professional plumber, the cordless expander isn't a luxury. It's a fundamental tool of the trade and it pays for itself in time saved because labor is the most expensive thing you can have. And on jobs that can get you done faster than the manual one can. And most importantly, the peace of mind from a perfect reliable connection every single time. So guys, you see the manual one, it blew out on both ends. We saw that in the video and you can see we've got separation here and we've got the plug starting to come out here. Now don't get me wrong, it held it up to 510 PSI. Your house is never gonna get to that. If you've got one or two joints, this is fantastic. The Milwaukee, the joints didn't leak. The pipe burst and it did it at 866 PSI. Choosing the right tool is a sign of a true professional. It shows that you understand that quality, speed, and reliability are more important than just the upfront cost. Guys, if it's all about upfront cost to you, man, you're always gonna have the worst tool. This is a mindset. That professional mindset is the core of what we teach in our Becoming a Better Trade Person course. We go beyond the basics to teach you the strategies, the techniques, and the decision-making process that top-tier plumbers, they use these to maximize their skill and their income. Now, you've already invested in your tools. Now, maybe it's time to invest in the expertise that makes them truly profitable. You know the plumbers, the ones that are out there making the most money, that's what you can do. So click the link in the description to see how you can elevate your craft. Now that you know which expander to use, check out our ultimate guide to PEX versus copper right here in this video. Or watch one of the controversial takes that we have on Shark Bite fittings over here. I'll see you in the next video.